Hello! My name is Elon Osborne, and I like to talk about movies, audio, and music. And you've just got your first external amplifier to go along with your receiver. Congratulations! But how the heck do you hook it all up? Well, in this demonstration, I will be using the Marantz SR7015, but as long as your receiver has a full set of pre-outs like this one, the concept will be the same, since I will be going over how to physically connect these two devices. So let's get started, shall we? Okay, I'm gonna go over a couple of scenarios, and this video is going to feature the basics a3 three-channel amplifier from Emotiva, as well as the Outlaw Model 7000X, all being controlled by my Marantz SR7015. Scenario one, let's say you want to power your front sound stage, your left, center, and right, with your new Basics A3 three-channel amplifier. So we'll start with front right, pre-out, and we will connect it to this input here. And then this is your speaker out terminal. So you connect speaker wire to this and that goes out to your speaker. Front left pre out to this input and front left speaker out. And then your center channel pre-out to this middle input. And there you have it. So that takes care of the RCA cables. And lastly, don't forget the trigger outputs. So that way the amp automatically turns on when you turn on the Marantz. You don't have to turn them both on manually. So we'll put that in trigger one. And put this in trigger input. Ta-da! And that pretty much takes care of the physical connections. Once we're in the setup menu, you need to go down to speakers, manual, amp assign. All right, now that we're in assign mode, in order to trigger the receiver to automatically assume that you're gonna be using an external amp, you wanna go with 11.1 .1 channel for the assign mode. This just tells the receiver, hey, we're gonna use an external amp, so watch out. So let's say we have a 5.1.4 Dolby Atmos configuration. Since we're still using an external amp, we actually do want to choose not five channel, but five channel and surround back. This automatically assigns some pre-outs to two of the speakers. The words pre are floating above the rear height channels. So since we're dealing with 5.1.4 in this scenario, yes, we want four channels to be our height assignment. So we'll keep it like this where we have four in ceiling speakers installed. But because in this scenario, we're gonna be powering the front LCR, we want to assign the pre-outs to go to the front speakers. As you can now see, pre is labeled on the front left and right speakers. You don't need to assign the center speaker to have its own pre-out. It's only the front left and right and rear height channels that actually need to be assigned. Otherwise, all the other speaker pre-outs are just ready to go. They're just waiting for a signal, right? So the center speaker pre-out will just be ready to send out a signal when you plug in an RCA cable into the pre-out which we've already done. Once again, let's choose front for the pre-outs. Let's go back to speaker config front. Even though I have large towers, I do want to be able to control the crossover frequencies. And you're only able to do that if you choose small. So I personally like to choose small so that I can have control over the crossover frequency. Because if you choose large, the ability to change the crossover frequency is no longer there because it automatically makes it full range because they are large speakers. Set it back to small. That's just how I like it. Center, small as well. Subwoofer, we have one. Surrounds, small. Surround back, we have none because we're doing a 5.1.4 configuration in this scenario. Top front, small. Top rear, small. Back up, go down to crossovers. And like I was saying, you can change the crossover frequencies of the front, center, surround, top front, top rear, depending upon the frequency response of your speakers. 
So check your speaker's manual, or maybe you can check the manual online. See how far those speakers can go down in hertz. Say if it goes down to 45 hertz, you still want to have a crossover frequency about somewhere between 10 to 20 hertz above the absolute lowest hertz that it can handle. So if I had front speakers that can go down to 45 hertz, 60 hertz crossovers would be perfect because that fits in that 10 to 20 hertz pocket. So I'm just going to leave that how it is. And once you've done this step, now that the receiver knows which speaker configuration you're working with and which channels are assigned to pre-outs and external amps, I would now run Odyssey to get all the distances right and EQs and make it all gel well together. Scenario two, maybe you just got an Outlaw Model 7000X and you want to use all seven channels to power your seven bed layer speakers. Let's get after it. First off, you can see that these are labeled with speaker assignments already. And I suggest you follow those speaker assignments because it allows for better heat distribution among your front soundstage, your left, center, and right, which heats up the most when you're watching television and movies. With that being said, we'll start with front right. All the way over to here since it's labeled right. Then we'll go front left to the opposite side of the amp. See? Plenty of heat distribution that way. Next up is the center. Boop. Which goes into the center input. Ta-da! Next up, right surround. Boink. All the way over here. Dink. Left surround is next. Into left surround input. Right surround back. Right surround back. Ta da! Left surround back. To left surround back. Nice. As always, don't forget trigger output automatically turn that amp on when you turn on the receiver. Ta-da! And there you have it. There's your physical connections. Success. Scenario number three, say you had a 5.1.4 Dolby Atmos configuration and you had both the Model 7000X and Basics a3, and you wanted to power all nine channels externally. Well, more power to you. Let's see what that looks like with physical connections. Once again, we'll start with front right. All the way over to front right. Front left. To front left. Center to center. Ta da. Surround right. All the way over to surround right. Cool. Surround left. Two, surround left. Mm -hmm. Now, this is where it differs since we're running a 5.1.4 configuration. Next will be 
front right height, which is height one on the Marantz. And we'll put it into this amp input. Height one left. We'll put it in this. Okay. Rear height or height two right. We will plug into the basics A3. Cool. And rear height or height two left. Also plug into the basics A3. And we've got one channel open, which is totally fine. And now that we have two separate amps we're dealing with, we've got one trigger output going to trigger input of the Outlaw Mono 7000X and a second trigger output going to the Basics A3. Yay! There she blows all nine channels of your 5.1.4 Dolby Atmos configuration powered externally. Since we are powering all the channels with an external amp, we want to choose pre-amplifier. Whoa, cool. So now every single speaker shows the word pre floating above it or next to it. Hooray. Thank you for joining me on this external amp connection tutorial. Now it's your turn. Is this your first external amp or do you already own more than one? Did you already know about separating your front sound stage to give it better heat distribution? Are external amps just not for you? Can you already hear a difference it makes when using external amps with your receiver? Let's start a conversation people. As always, please be kind to each other out there. Don't just watch TV and movies, experience them. And of course, always be listening.